engines that would power the launch escape system in an abort scenario. And again, now that uh, the fueling is underway on Falcon 9, that means the eight Super Draco engines built directly into Crew Dragon are ready, if needed, to launch the capsule off of the Falcon 9 rocket in an instant, should there be any kind of emergency associated with the rocket or the launch pad. The NASA and SpaceX teams have trained extensively for exactly that type of contingency, uh, along with the Department of Defense, Detachment 3, who does a fantastic job in those training scenarios. Now over to SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne for an operations update. John? Well, we are counting down those final minutes, and everything's still looking good for Falcon 9 and Dragon for an on-time launch just under 33 minutes from now. Falcon 9 did begin propellant loading just a couple of minutes ago. We heard it. Now the first and second stages of Falcon 9 are each loaded with two liquid propellants. One is fuel. That's loaded into the tank at the bottom of each stage. The other is an oxidizer, and that goes, obviously, into the tank at the top of each stage. Now the fuel that we use to power the Merlin engines is a refined kerosene called RP-1. And the oxidizer loaded on each stage is densified liquid oxygen called LOX. Densified means that it is kept much colder than typical for launch vehicles, and it takes up less volumes. So this allows us to get more oxidizer loaded onto the first and second stages. Now to ignite the fuel and oxidizer in the Merlin rocket engine, we use an ignition fluid called T-tub. When T-tub comes in contact with oxygen, it burns, and it gives off a green-colored flame. Now, once we've got the flame going, we add the kerosene fuel into the Merlin chamber, and the engine ramps up to full power. You might see the green flash just as the second stage engine ignites following stage separation. Now, currently, we've just begun. The first stage fuel tank is about, right now, a little under 10% full. The first stage is the bottom two-thirds of the vehicle you see on your screen. The white cylinder topped off by the black cylinder. That makes up the first stage. And then the top one-third underneath the Dragon capsule, that's our second stage. Now, at this time, the second stage fuel tank is about 8% full. Now, the fuel tank, if you were to zoom in, that's where the NASA uh, meatball logo is positioned. And right above it, you can just make out the red NASA worm logo and that's where the liquid oxygen tank is on the second stage, and there's a closer view. Now, in addition to loading the fuel, we're also loading oxygen, the liquid oxygen, onto the first stage. We won't start liquid oxygen loading on the second stage until T minus 16 minutes and 30 seconds. Start stage one cryo and liquid cryo. oxygen will continue loading on both stages until the last few minutes of the countdown. Helium loading into pressure vessels is also underway. We use that to pressurize the tanks in flight as the propellant is pulled out by the Merlin turbo pumps. On board the Dragon spacecraft, you can see here in a close up, the astronauts are monitoring systems while the propellant is loaded into the Falcon 9. The crew training in the simulator included playback of sounds that we've recorded in the Dragon capsule during recent flights. So they get an idea what all that hissing and popping uh, and banging is from the vent valves and the pressurization systems. Now the range continues to report no problems. They are go to support launch. And the weather also looks good. I mentioned the T minus one hour briefing. We called it fantastic. Currently we don't have anything that we are tracking that could be a concern. We have a very small possibility of a pop-up rain shower, but nothing showing up. So right now, 29 minutes, 40 seconds ago, it looks like we've got good weather. Now as a reminder, today we have an instantaneous launch window. So at this point, if we hear a hold for any reason, we'll have to stand down and target our backup launch opportunity coming in three days. So right now, let's turn it back over to Jesse and Gary for an overview of events that are going to happen after the liftoff of Falcon 9. Great news, John. For Crew 2, the astronauts' flight to station will take about 23 hours, and their journey will be fairly similar to the trip Crew 1 made in November of last year. All right, as we wait T0 in just about 29 minutes, the ground operations teams are doing a series of systems checks to make sure both Dragon and Falcon 9 are ready for launch. You're looking at a live view of our teams at the Cape as they prepare for liftoff. As we wait for the launch clock to hit zero, we wanted to give you an overview of what the ascent portion of the mission will look like. 
once we hit T0 and a successful launch occurs, we will watch Falcon 9 and Dragon lift off from historic launch pad 39A and make their ascent. At about 50 seconds into the flight, Falcon 9 engines will throttle up to help pass through the period of maximum dynamic pressure on the rocket, or what we typically refer to as max Q. It's worth noting that once we hit max Q, the vehicle will be going supersonic. Once we are through the period of maximum dynamic pressure, we can throttle up our nine Merlin engines again. And from there, at about two and a half minutes into flight, we have a series of three events that will happen, it happen in rapid succession. First is MECO, or main engine cutoff. This is where all nine Merlin 1D engines shut off in preparation for stage separation, which is our second event. This is where the first stage detaches from the second stage, with the first stage making its way back to Earth for landing as the second stage continues on its journey with the third event, SES-1, or second stage engine start number one, is where the MVAC engine lights up and propels the second stage along with our Crew-2 astronauts to orbit. As stage two heads towards its targeted drop-off orbit, stage one will execute two burns in order to make its way back to Earth. The first is the entry burn, where three of the nine M1D engines will reignite and then shut down. And this helps to slow the stage down in preparation for entry back into the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. While the first stage is heading back to Earth, the second stage will cut off its one Merlin engine that was ignited right after stage separation. Once this happens, we'll wait for confirmation of a good orbital insertion. About 90 seconds after Dragon gets into orbit, Falcon 9 will land back on Earth. The landing burn is just a single engine burn, powerful enough to bring the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship about nine and a half minutes into the mission. While Falcon 9 first stage is landing, Dragon is preparing to separate from the second stage. At about three minutes after the second stage gets into orbit, we should have a great view of Dragon with its four-person crew drifting away from the second stage. Once Dragon is a short distance away, it will begin checking out its Draco maneuvering thrusters to make sure Dragon continues to increase separation distance from the second stage. It's worth noting that these are not the Super Draco engines that would be used during an abort scenario. About 40 seconds after separation, Dragon's nose cone deploy sequence will begin. It will take roughly four minutes for the nose cone hooks to unlatch and open, exposing its guidance navigation controls, or what we call GNC, that will help Dragon autonomously fly to the space station. And lastly, once the nose cone is deployed, the remaining Draco thrusters on the forward bulkhead will be checked. From there, over the next 23 plus hours, Dragon will be in its rendezvous and approach phases, undergoing a number of phasing burns as it makes its way to station. All of that will be coming up soon. For now, let's check back in with Courtney in Mission Control Houston. Courtney. Thanks, Gary. The space station team here in Houston is focused, and the critical systems on the station continue to function Started normally. The teams have verified the command path. from the ground through our constellation of communication satellites to the station. Everything is nominal and the station will be ready to receive Dragon tomorrow. Once the crew arrives at the station, they'll join Expedition 65. While on board, their official designation will be flight engineers, except for JAXA's Aki Hoshide, who will take command of the space station from NASA's Shannon Walker just before Crew-1 comes home. He'll be the station commander until the fall, when he'll hand the reins to European, European Space Agency Thomas Pasquet for the final part of their mission. Flight Director Paul Kanya is on console now, leading flight controllers in Houston for launch, and Flight Director Scott Stover will lead teams for docking tomorrow. Just a reminder that a launch today will take about 23 and a half hours to get to station with a docking to the Node 2 forward port scheduled tomorrow at 4.10 a.m. Central. Once Dragon is docked to the station, the team here in Houston will assist Dragon and Space Station astronauts with leak checks as they will work to open hatches on both Dragon and the inside of the station's pressurized mating adapter. We expect hatch open to take place approximately two hours after dock docking. That's it for us here in Mission Control Houston. I'll send it back over to the team in Florida. Marie? All right, thanks, Courtney. Uh, you're looking live at the Falcon 9 rocket and SpaceX Crew Dragon. Um, and we can see liquid oxygen venting uh, off the rocket. That is uh, normal and expected. It is now T minus 23 minutes, 50 seconds and counting from the third astronaut launch from U.S. soil in the past year and the first with two international partners aboard. 
Commander Shane Kimbrough, Pilot Megan MacArthur, and Mission Specialist Toma Pesquet and Aki Hoshide are strapped into their seats inside the Crew Dragon Endeavor on top. There's an inside view. We can see them live as the Falcon 9 rocket fueling operation is well underway now. The launch escape system is armed, and that means the Crew Dragon is prepared to launch itself away from the Falcon 9 rocket in case of an emergency on the pad or after liftoff. So far, operations look and sound as expected, and we are counting down to liftoff at 549 Eastern Time. This mission is the continuation of rotational crew flights to the International Space Station from U.S. soil on private rockets and spacecraft. This wouldn't have been possible without the success of the NASA SpaceX Demo-2 test flight last year and the safe delivery of the Crew-1 astronauts to the space station last fall for a long-duration mission. Those Crew-1 astronauts are preparing to return to Earth shortly after Crew-2 arrives at station. And this will be the first time we'll see two Crew Dragons docked to the space station at the same time. Crew-1's resilience and Crew-2's endeavor that's on the launch, launch pad right now. With the arrival of the Crew 2 team, uh, I believe that'll bring the headcount on station to 11 people. And as much as I love ca camping, that down sound, <laughs> that does sound like it would be a little crowded up there. <laughs> yeah, you know, you counted 11 people on board the station, nine of them in the U.S. segment. We've got four crew quarters, which are basically crew bedrooms. Uh, we've got both commanders of the Dragons sleeping in their vehicles. That leaves three people needing a place to sleep. That's Suichi, Shannon, and Victor. They'll be in the gym, the Columbus, and the airlock, respectively. So you could you could say it's a, quite a full house. They'll be <laughs> camping out, rolling out their sleeping bags on rack fronts. So it'll be uh, it'll be tight. What a what a great benefit to being commander. You have your own <laughs> private suite <laughs> <laughs> with windows. And yeah, it's a nice place to be. Yeah, and that's honestly the the window shots that we have been receiving from the crew have been one of my favorite things from the crew one team up there and even Bob and Doug whenever they were up there as well um, just the the view outside of the the crew dragon window it's it's actually my phone background right now <laughs> um, and it's just incredible and I love what, what we, that we get to that they share their perspective with us from from uh, uh, above let's give you a quick recap of who the astronauts are uh, sitting inside the capsule here in the foreground uh, sitting closest to uh, the front of your screen is Commander Shane Kimbrough. Uh, he is commanding the Crew Dragon Endeavor today, and he is a native of Texas, making his third trip to space. Uh, the retired U.S. Army Colonel first launched aboard the Space Shuttle Endeavor on STS-126, then aboard a Russian Soyuz spacecraft for Expeditions 49 and 50. Kimbrough has spent a total of 189 days in space and performed six spacewalks. Pilot Megan MacArthur will be making her second trip to space, but her first to the space station. She was born in Honolulu. But she was born in Honolulu, but considers California her home state. MacArthur served as a mission specialist aboard Space Shuttle Atlantis on STS-125, the final servicing mission of the Hubble Space Telescope. She operated the shuttle's robotic arm over the course of 12 days and 21 hours, capturing the telescope and maneuvering the crew members throughout five spacewalks to lengthen the telescope's life. And mission specialist Aki Hoshide is embarking on his third space flight today. The JAXA astronaut from Tokyo previously flew on STS-124 aboard the space shuttle Discovery to deliver and install Japan's science laboratory Kibo. He also flew aboard the Russian Soyuz on Expeditions 32 and 33 for a 124-day visit to the space station. And in the uh, far corner of your screen is Mission Specialist Toma Pesquet. He will be making his second trip to space. Born in Rouen, France, Pesquet first flew to space on the Russian Soyuz as a flight engineer for Expeditions 50 and 51. In that time, he worked on more than 50 different experiments and performed two spacewalks with Kimbrough to maintain the space station. He has logged 197 days in space. Pesquet will be the first European to fly in Crew Dragon, and it will be the first time a European astronaut has launched from America in more than a decade. 
Each of these four crew members will join Expedition 65 once they arrive at the International Space Station, with Aki Hoshide taking over as commander of the station right before Crew 1 departs. And as we're looking at uh, a live view of the pad, again, fueling is underway. We heard a call out uh, during those bio recaps that um, the RP-1 load is complete on the second stage. And we have a really uh, special treat if we could take a view of Bob Benkin's spacesuit. Uh, we have that uh, in studio. That is the, uh, the actual spacesuit worn by Bob Benkin uh, during the Demo 2 test flight, and you can see the photo of his wife, Megan MacArthur, uh, in the photo there, and she is sitting in the same spacecraft in the same seat that Bob did um, almost a year ago on the Demo 2 mission. Pa uh, Megan is the pilot for this mission. There's a shot of uh, Bob's spacesuit on the left and Doug Hurley's spacesuit on the right. This was a couple days ago during the pre-launch news conference. So again, looking uh, live at the pad, uh, Falcon 9 will have uh, 1.7 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, and uh, we've we've heard it sounds like a gorilla sitting on your chest. Would you say that's accurate, Tracy? Yeah, yeah. I've never had actually a gorilla on my chest, but I imagine that um, uh, one would be that heavy. That uh, the the feeling that you have in your chest is pretty significant. Once again, the white cloud that we see there is expected, totally normal. That's just the liquid oxygen uh, vaporizing, essentially, as it comes into contact with this humid Florida air. Uh, as a point of reference, this the liquid oxygen that we load on board Falcon 9 is uh, super chilled to help densify um, the that liquid oxygen. When I say super chilled, I mean really, really cold. Uh, we're talking <laughs> like negative 336 degrees. So, um, of course, whenever it comes into ambient air, um, it will turn into its gaseous state. Which we load has started. Okay, and there we just heard the call out that second stage LOX load has just begun. And so the mission teams um, that we've seen in control rooms from Kennedy Space Center to Houston to Hawthorne are all uh, laser focused on keeping this crew safe uh, from this point and all the way to the space station and back home in six months. We had a chance to ask about their mindset right now from a couple of their leaders. There's a very delicate dance between the weather, <laughs> normally the weather and the operations and, you know, making sure all these complex systems are working correctly together. And what is really important is just how calmly, quietly, efficiently the team's working through every single one of those things. It's why we train. People are very passionate about this program, as am I, and uh, they know the consequences of what they're doing. They know that the crew's lives depend on what they're doing. This human spaceflight endeavor requires diligence every day on the job, and I think our team knows that. I definitely feel like those crew members are in our hands, and we need to be there thinking straight, making sure we're making the right decisions so that we're getting that crew safely to the International Space Station. And th that was... Um, Kathy Leaders and Steve Stitch, um, who have been in charge of the NASA team uh, for much of the life of the commercial crew program and have worked very closely um, with the folks on the SpaceX side who have gotten to know these astronauts uh, on a personal level and um, have taken such care in all of the checkouts and the, uh, the paranoia reviews, as they're called, to make sure that they're constantly looking for problems to uncover um, to make sure that um, every, every leaf, every stone is unturned to make this, safe as, uh, this flight as safe as possible for the crew. Again, it is now T minus 14 minutes, 15 seconds and counting. Uh, liftoff will be about one hour before sunrise here on Florida Space Coast. And if we're lucky, we may see a beautiful contrail at first light. At the time of launch at 5.49 and 2 seconds Eastern Time, the space station will be flying 258 miles over the Indian Ocean south of Sri Lanka. 
And now with T minus 13 minutes, 50 seconds and counting, we want to focus on the pad as we proceed through the final stretch of the countdown. We will turn it over to Hawthorne to take us through launch at 549 this morning. John. We're inside T minus 14 minutes. Everything is still looking good for launch of Falcon 9 and Dragon, 49 minutes and two seconds after the hour. Falcon 9 began propellant load at T minus 35 minutes. Loading of the RP-1 fuel onto stage two is complete. Fuel loading is continuing on the first stage. We're over half full and it'll finish at T minus six minutes. The densified liquid oxygen loading is continuing on the first stage. And we began loading liquid oxygen onto the second stage a few minutes ago. The liquid oxygen loading will wrap up T minus three minutes on the first stage, about T minus two minutes on the second stage. Checkouts of the thrust vector controllers, what we call TVC wiggles, are coming up, along with throttle valve checkouts on the engines. That's where we move the engines a little bit, make sure the hydraulics are ready to go. Currently, the range is go, ready to support, working no issues. And we continue to have good weather, both at the launch pad, at ground level, at the upper altitude winds, and downrange at the contingency landing sites. On the Dragon spacecraft, the Dragon mission director and team, they're reporting no issues. Their communication checkouts are complete. The crew access arm is retracted, as you see on your monitors, away from the vehicle. The launch escape system is armed. The crew is strapped in and ready to go. Final instructions of the crew will be coming at T minus 10 minutes. They'll just configure their displays for launch. That will give them insight into how the launch is pr proceeding, and it provides constant updates on vehicle health. And for Dragon at T minus 5 minutes, we'll hear it enter terminal count as they transition to internal power. Now we're going to hear continued callouts on the countdown net as we get close to T minus 0 and to the liftoff. Now, Gary, we talked about the ascent sequence of events that are coming up here. You and Jesse went through that a little while ago, but we're also going to have abort modes. Can you explain a little bit about what the abort mode callouts are that we might hear? That's right, John. Uh, we're continuing to track that the Falcon 9 and Dragon are looking good for launch, but just in case anything were to happen, Dragon is fully prepared uh, to initiate an abort and use those Super Draco engines to escape from a speeding Falcon 9. On the way uphill, you'll hear a series of letter and number combinations. Uh, those will denote the stage that the rocket is on and the abort zone uh, that we're on as well. On first stage, you'll hear abort zones A and B. Uh, that will cover the Falcon 9's ascent up to about the northern border of uh, North Carolina, about seven and a half to eight miles uh, in altitude. And the stage two will have stage two A through E. Mostly it will be stage A, or stage 2A uh, abort zone, but towards the end of the six minutes that stage 2 will be firing, you'll hear the numbers start going out from B to E, uh, with E being an abort to orbit. Uh, all of these capabilities enabled on the Dragon spacecraft to make sure that the crew uh, will be delivered safely into orbit. Inside 10 minutes and 30 seconds, we should be hearing uh, some final status, maybe a good luck and uh, Godspeed from some of the ground teams here, uh, ensuring that the crew is ready to go, that Falcon 9, Dragon, and all the support teams are ready for launch. Dragon, SpaceX, confirmed crew displays are configured for launch. Displays are configured for launch. SpaceX copies. Shane, Megan, Aki, Tama, we're thrilled to have the crew on board Endeavor once again and truly honored to have you, you all at the helm. It's been a pleasure training alongside you ahead of this historic launch. We wish you a great mission, good luck, and enjoy the ride. Thank you, Chad, Christian, Frank, and all the teams who got our crew and vehicle ready for this mission. I want to say a special thank you to our families and friends. We're incredibly grateful for your support and sacrifice during our training and our upcoming flight. Our crew is flying astronauts from NASA, ESA, and JAXA, which hasn't happened in over 20 years. We're excited to represent our nations, agencies, and all of humanity. 
Off the earth, for the earth, Endeavor is ready to go. All right, some celebratory handshakes from inside the Crew Dragon. That was the voice of the core, uh, Chad Healy, here in uh, Mission Control Hawthorne. Uh, next series of events, John, will be the engine chill. Everything's looking good so far. Yeah, it is. Uh, we're actually watching uh, the uh, fuel trim valves on the Merlin 1D engines going through some checkouts right now. And as you said, at T-minus seven minutes, we're going to start uh, a sequence of events that begins with opening the pre-valves. Currently, the liquid oxygen, the kerosene fuel on the Falcon 9 first, second stages is separated from the Merlin engines. T minus seven minutes, just over a minute from now, we open the pre valves. That allows propellant down to the top of the engine or the uh, inlet to the turbo pumps. At the same time, we open up bleed valves on the turbo pumps, and that allows a little bit of that densified, ultra cold liquid oxygen to flow through the pump and to chill down the liquid oxygen pump. That way, when we get to T minus two seconds and we spin the pumps up and everything comes to full power, we're not pulling very cold liquid oxygen through a warm pump. So as that cools it down right now, that'll get it ready for that ignition sequence in the last couple of seconds. So we should hear that call out that the stage one engine chill has started. You'll also hear in flight, uh, about a minute and a half, two minutes into flight, MVAC chill has begun. Uh, that's also a repeat sequence there where we open uh, the bleed valve and begin chilling that engine one more time before it lights after stage separation. Right now we're waiting to see the pre-valves come open and the chill begin. Stage one engine chill has started. Yep, and there's the call out. We've got indication the pre-valves coming open on the engines. And we have begun to chill in the Merlin engines for flight. That's right, John. Now inside six minutes, 40 seconds. RP-1 rocket grade kerosene is completely filled in the second stage. We're anticipating about 30 more seconds for the first stage to be completely filled with that RP-1 refined kerosene. liquid oxygen will continue to flow through the first and second stages up to the final minutes before Stage T zero. One, our load is complete. All right, confirmation. We have 100% fill of RP one on both the first and second stages. Six minutes to go until an instantaneous launch window today. The next milestone will be tra uh, Dragon to transition to configure for terminal count, and this time uh, terminal count. The Dragon will be on internal power, no longer relying on the lines from the ground. And from there, the Falcon 9 propellant tanks will pressurize for strong back retract. That'll be another visual milestone. The clamps just uh, below the Dragon's unpressurized trunk will open, and the strong back will tilt back just two degrees. Then right after liftoff, back to 45 degrees. Again, RP-1 kerosene, both on the first and second stages. Liquid oxygen continues to flow through on the first and second stages. That very densified, very cold liquid oxygen. Dragon has transitioned to configure for terminal count. Falcon 9 propellant tanks are pressurizing for strong back retract. All right, John, good calls and right on time. Dragon is now on internal power. Okay, next major event coming up is gonna be opening the clamp arms around the second stage in preparation for retracting the strong back away from the vehicle to get ready for liftoff. Strong back is retracting. We heard the call out, strong back is beginning to retract. We're into the automated sequence we should see the clamp arms that are just visible there uh, around the top of the second stage begin to open up. Once they are open, then the strong back will begin to move away from the Falcon 9. Well, 
Watching the sequence, a nice view from up on top of the fixed service structure. The arms are opening. And we're beginning to recline away from the Falcon 9. We'll move the strong back two degrees away from the Falcon 9. That'll get it ready for liftoff. And at T0, when we the flight computer commands liftoff, the hydraulics on the strong back will pull it to a position 45 degrees away from the Falcon 9, giving it the clearance for launch. So right now, the strong back is moving away. Everything proceeding nominally. It's great to, to yeah. hear, uh, John. We're also anxiously awaiting the liquid oxygen complete on the first stage. Should hear that call very shortly. Dragon has transitioned to terminal count and is on internal power. Stage one locks load is complete. Okay, we've heard the call out. Stage one locks load is complete. We're loading liquid oxygen on the second stage for about another 30 seconds or so. Once we get the liquid oxygen load complete on the second stage, the propellant line that runs up the side of the strong back that carries liquid oxygen will vent that line down to make sure there's no liquid in it when we get to liftoff. When we do that, we open up valves on the strong back and as uh, Kate and Marie were talking earlier, when we vent off that very cold gaseous oxygen, it'll merge with the warm, humid Florida air and you'll get a large white plume of condensation off of the back of the strong back. That'll be normal coming about a minute and a half before launch. Everything continuing to Stage look good. Stage two lock load is complete. Dragon is in auto idle. All right, with that, the Falcon 9 is fully fueled. We have fuel on both the first and second stages, and both stages are filled with liquid oxygen. Gas closeout has started. Expect loud venting. Dragon is also in auto idle. The flight computer is on Dragon. Maintaining their calculations, standing by, waiting for the T0 mark. One minute, 15 seconds until launch. The one minute mark, Dragon will transition to countdown and the flight termination system will arm. The computers on Falcon 9 will be talking to the computers on Dragon and can issue an abort if necessary. FTS is armed. Falcon 9 is in startup and is now controlling. Dragon is in countdown. All right, 50 seconds to go. Everything is ready for an on-time launch today. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. Copy, go for launch. Ground teams are ready and the crew inside Dragon is ready. 30 seconds to go yeah, until launch. Seconds. T-minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Mission and liftoff. Got speed Endeavor and crew 2. Copy, one alpha. Endeavor launches once again. Four astronauts from three countries on Crew 2 now making their way to the one and only International Space Station. The vehicle is pitching down range. Nine Merlin engines on the first stage providing 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Hearing good calls on the first stage performance so far. We are T plus 30 seconds into the second rotational crew mission on board Dragon and Falcon 9. Falcon 9 will be throttling down the nine Merlin engines shortly here in preparation for in preparation for maximum dynamic pressure. And there's that call out for the throttle down. Maximum dynamic pressure max Q is the largest structural load that the vehicle sees throughout ascent. So throttling down does help us pass. Throttling down helps us pass through this period, which should be coming here shortly. Q. There's a call out that we have just passed through Max Q. Stage one, 
throttle up. And one Bravo. Oh. Copy, one Bravo. All right, one Bravo is the second abort mode on the first stage. The first stage continues to fire for two minutes, 35 seconds. One and a half minutes into today's flight. Falcon 9 now traveling at 1,500 miles an hour. Impact engine chill has started. All right, the engine chill for the second stage single Merlin engine has started. About 30 more seconds of the first stage firing to bring our four astronauts into orbit. Now from here coming up in about 20 some seconds, we're going to have three major milestones. We'll have shutdown of the nine Merlin engines. We're beginning to throttle them down. We will then get stage Page separation. Throttle down. And then we will get ignition of the second stage engine to propel Dragon and the Falcon 9 second stage into orbit. Hey, Two Alpha. Go. Copy to Alpha. Confirmed. Acquisition signal right. And the ignition. And we have ignition of the second stage. You see the green flash of that T-TEB fluid. The ex expansion nozzle on the second stage Merlin vacuum glowing that bright red that we like to see. Good performance on the second stage so far. And on the left side of your screen, we saw the uh, exhaust of the second stage engine streaming past the first stage as the grid fins are coming out. We also briefly had a view of the lights of Central Florida in the background. Currently, the first stage is continuing to coast up to Apogee. It's unpowered. It'll reach a peak height and then begin to descend back down toward the Earth's atmosphere where it will light three engines to slow down in preparation for what will be a landing burn on the drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. You can see the grid fins are deployed. Right now, the first stage Dragon pulsing. SpaceX, trajectory nominal. We're pulsing the thrusters. Signal of Bermuda. Copy, nominal trajectory. We hear a call out from the crew, nominal trajectory. So we're beginning to move the first stage into position so it can do the entry burn. Four minutes, 15 seconds into today's flight. Second stage propelling our four astronauts up the eastern seaboard. We'll continue to fire. It's a six-minute burn to deliver the astronauts into orbit. We'll wait for a cue for good orbital insertion after that. Meanwhile, we will be hearing uh, check-ins on the vehicle's trajectory and performance, as well as check-ins with some of the ground stations as it passes over uh, throughout uh, the six minutes of the second stage firing. Dragon SpaceX trajectory nominal. Copy nominal trajectory. Getting good views of both the first and second stage from the onboard cameras. Acquisition of signal bus. The New Hampshire tracking station has acquired the second stage telemetry signal. Meanwhile, the first stage has reached Apogee, and it's now beginning to descend from uh, a height. It's currently about 167 kilometers up, and in a few minutes we will get the entry burn of the second stage, of the first stage. Dragon SpaceX trajectory nominal. Copy nominal trajectory. Right on cue, those check-ins on the second stage performance. Once a minute, everything's looking good on PHQ that second stage. Propulsion is nominal.
stage two continues to climb, the vehicle now exceeding 8,000 miles an hour at an altitude of about 124 miles. And just about one minute from now, we will begin the entry burn of the first stage. That will consist of lighting the center engine, and then shortly afterwards, two more engines for a three-engine burn to slow down the first stage in preparation for entering the Earth's atmosphere. Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Copy, nominal trajectory. Another check-in, the crew confirming they're hearing the same thing. The vehicle exceeding, are about to exceed about 10,000 miles per hour. Meanwhile, first stage down at 90 kilometers, getting ready to relight three engines for the entry burn. Stage two FTS has saved. We've got the center engine ignition and there come the two side engines. Now this entry burn will last about 29 seconds. It's going to significantly slow down the vehicle in preparation for hitting the denser part of the Earth's atmosphere. Entry burn complete. We're down below 35 kilometers, continuing to look good on the first stage, heading to the Atlantic Ocean for a landing on the drone ship. While well, second stage is less than a minute away from cutoff. Stage two in terminal guidance. Shannon. Copy, Shannon. Shannon called out at the back end of the stage two, a few seconds until cutoff. In the shutdown. Dragon SpaceX launch escape system disarmed. Launch escape system disarmed. Copy. Dragon SpaceX, nominal orbit insertion. Copy, nominal orbital insertion. All right, the Falcon 9 second stage has done its job delivering our four crew into orbit. You hear the applause here in Hawthorne. We're waiting to get a video signal back from the drone ship. Of course, I still love you. And the view from the onboard camera we saw just briefly. It looks like first stage on the drone ship. Getting views of the Dragon trunk. So the first stage is on the drone ship, successfully landed. And more importantly, second stage is in a nominal orbit with the Dragon spacecraft getting ready for some important events coming up, Gary. That's right. About two more minutes, the Dragon and the second stage of the Falcon 9 will be in a coast phase. It'll take that long until the spacecraft separates from the Falcon 9. Of course, both uh, now in a nominal orbit. It's great to see some of the views of the Earth as it passes by over the North Atlantic Ocean. All right, we're getting shots of the crew in orbit. I'm looking uh, for that zero G indicator. Can't seem to see it in this shot, but we have a minute to go until we have uh, spacecraft separation. Dragon traveling at nearly 17,000 miles per hour at an altitude of 124 miles.
Again, the four-person crew of Endeavour is in orbit right now. Less than 30 seconds until we have spacecraft separation. Ten seconds to spacecraft separation. We should hear words from the core here in uh, Mission Control Hawthorne once we have successful separation. Crude Falcon 9, Sierra side, Crew 2. Thank you very much. We're great. It's glad to be back in space for all of us, and we'll uh, send our regards to Crew 1 when we get there. Thanks. Absolutely stunning views from both inside the cabin, seeing the excitement of our four-person crew inside Endeavour, and watching Endeavour drift away from the camera on the second stage as the Earth passes by on an orbital sunrise. SpaceX Endeavour, we... And Endeavour, you uh, cut out a little bit there. If the question was uh, if you're go to open visors, you are go to open visors at this time. Copy and work, thanks. All right, 13 and a half minutes past liftoff. The crew is in orbit, traveling at nearly 17,000 miles an hour. Well, Gary, I don't know about you, but uh, that was a great countdown. <laughs> Everything sounded great. Right on and time, Dragon's actually a little ahead of time. Multi-humidifier activation and service section Draco checkouts. Got a good orbit out of Falcon 9, and first Got stage landed on the drone ship, and we're in the sunlight over the Atlantic Ocean with the Dragon spacecraft. All in all, a great day. I think everybody's jealous of the crew in orbit right now, John. Uh, these views, even just from the cameras, are absolutely stunning. It was great to see our crew members uh, get into orbit. They already performed successful checkouts of the 12 service section Dracos around Dragon. The next uh, milestone will be the deployment of the nose cone. That'll be about a five minute process, but that'll expose the forward bulkhead Dracos and prepare them uh, for checkout. There's a phase burn. There's five major burns that are needed to get the crew Dragon up to rendezvous with the International Space Station over the next 23 hours. And so that first phase burn is coming up real soon in about uh, 35 minutes, actually less than 35 minutes. And Jesse, I don't know if you could see the zero G indicator, but I was told it's a penguin. I'm trying to look for it. I'm looking for it too. Keep an eye out on that left-hand screen. Meanwhile, the uh, Dragon is configured for, for a nose cone deployment. We'll stand by for uh, when that sequence starts. The nose cone itself op opens uh, just beyond 90 degrees, about 105 degrees to expose the forward uh, bulkhead Dracos. Those forward bulkhead Dracos, four of them at the very top of the Dragon will do the bulk of the work when it comes to firing the Draco engines for minutes at a time to increase the uh, Dragon speed, altitude, and phasing to catch up with the International Space Station again over the next 23 hours. Meanwhile, we're still getting camera views from the second stage, looking at that expansion nozzle. Did its work beautifully to deliver the four crew into orbit? 
dragging over the North Atlantic Ocean. And Gary, this is John. I think I heard a call out on one of the dragon nets that the uh, first set of nose cone hooks is open. So it sounds like that sequence is going well. Very good. Well, from here in Hawthorne, it was very exciting to see the uh, Falcon 9 lift off and deliver our four-person crew into orbit. We're going to be with you throughout the entire phase, uh, the rendezvous phase, uh, until Dragon and this four-person crew docks with the International Space Station. That'll be over the next 23 hours. We'll bring you through some of those major burns uh, that are happening. But I am so jealous of Marie and the group over there <laughs> over at the Kennedy Space Center. You actually got to see the launch and probably feel it as well. Marie. What was that like? Oh, it was just spectacular. And, you know, the, the sun hasn't come up yet here in Florida, but, uh, you know, we were able to just turn around and see the launch right behind us, and it lit up the sky, just absolutely breathtaking. It was so, um, it was so astounding to see the, the colors. I mean, it was uh, not just your, your usual fireball, but uh, there was um, pulsating towards the end. And uh, Kate, you're much more eloquent uh, describing that sequence, which I appreciate you doing that while we were happy to help. <laughs> staring. It was, um, it was so fun. And knowing that um, those guys were enjoying the ride uh, along with uh, the sights that we got to see yeah. uh, made all the difference. Uh, there's nothing more relieving than um, crew in orbit. <laughs> yeah. And of course, uh, it, we were so lucky to have clear weather here, being able to see uh, the re-entry burn as well. I was hoping we were going to be able to catch landing burn, but uh, unfortunately, clouds on the horizon did block that view. But it was also uh, such a treat to be able to see the, the re-entry of that, uh, that first stage as well. <laughs> Let's go over to uh, Jasmine to get some reaction. Uh, I think she's with the NASA administrator now. Jasmine? Thanks. Thank you, Marie. Yes, I am joined again here with Steve Jerzyk. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Thank you. So we just had the privilege of watching that spectacular launch in person. What was that like? Uh, watching a launch, uh, particularly a human space launch, will never get old for me. It's just thrilling to see those nine engines light up and it lift off the pad, get to the main gen engine cutoff and separation and get that second stage started. And um, of course, pre-dawn launches are always amazing. And, uh, you know, we could see um, the vehicle pretty much through the entire trajectory up to Earth orbit. It was just spectacular. Right. No, absolutely. It was just stunning. And the sun is just now uh, starting to peek over the clouds here. Uh, so do you have any final words of encouragement for our NASA team, our SpaceX team, and our international partners? Yeah, you know, um, partnerships are key to what we do, um, particularly in human spaceflight. Our partnership with SpaceX has been tremendous. Third launch in less than a year um, after almost a 10-year a gap in human spaceflight launching astronauts from American soil on American rockets. Um, so our partnership with SpaceX and our commercial partners, other commercial partners is critical, and our international partners. Uh, we we could, could not do this without them. Uh, very international mission with two U.S. astronauts and one from ESA and one from JAXA. And uh, obviously the ISS is the largest engineering collab international collaboration in, in the history of humankind and it continues to amaze me um, how well we work together in doing all the research and technology on ISS and uh, I'm just so grateful for the, the NASA SpaceX um, uh, team uh, for their hard work and uh, getting this third launch off uh, the Crew 2 launch and uh, looking forward to uh, docking and hatch opening and the welcome ceremony and also looking forward to Crew 1 return uh, next Thursday on the 28th. Right, right. A lot of action still going on at the station right now. So as you mentioned, the next big milestone for Crew 2 will be docking at the station. So where are you going to be for that action? I'm actually going to stay here at Kennedy Space Center and follow the free flight uh, up to docking. And then I'm going to participate in the welcoming ceremony with, um, with uh, my counterparts from ESA, the Director General of ESA and the President of JAXA, and welcome the Crew 2 astronauts to the ISS. Fantastic. Kennedy is the place to be right now then, I guess. Do you have any uh, final remarks that you want to share with us today? Hey, you know, I'm just, I'm again, I'm just so proud of the team. Um, 
I'm so proud of what um, this team has been able to accomplish uh, over the past year, particularly. It's been uh, especially challenging, a uh, global pandemic and other challenges, and, uh, and just the focus of the team to get these three crew launches off, as well as launch Perseverance, land Perseverance, uh, first powered flight, uh, a controlled powered flight of a vehicle on another planet, first time generating oxygen from the atmosphere of Mars. Um, and, uh, and really looking forward to um, the core stage for SLS getting here and us moving forward to the first uh, uncrewed test flight, Artemis 1 of SLS and Orion. So uh, accomplished an incredible amount in this last year and much more to accomplish in the year to come. Absolutely. We've got a bright future right here at NASA. Thank you so much, uh, NASA Administrator Steve Jerzyk, for joining us today. Now we're going to take it back to the KSC host desk. Thanks, Jasmine. Shane, Megan, Toma, and Aki are on course to arrive at the International Space Station around 5.10 a.m. Eastern Time tomorrow. And we're going to stay on the air for continuous live coverage along their entire ride to station. Though our coverage here at Kennedy Space Center is concluding, we're going to turn it over to the teams in Hawthorne and Houston to take us through the next phases of the Crew 2 mission all the way through hatch opening and a welcome ceremony for the crew. And for those of you watching online on YouTube, take a look at the description below the video. There you'll find the new link for the, new, for the Crew 2 rendezvous and coast phase. Live coverage will continue at that new location shortly. And if you're watching on NASA TV, you won't miss a thing, and coverage will continue. That's right, and as you follow along, we invite you to tune in to a post-launch news conference at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time right here on NASA TV where NASA and SpaceX will take questions live. In addition to NASA TV, you can always follow along on Twitter at, at NASA, at SpaceX, and NASA.gov for mission updates. Huge thanks to all of our guests for joining us today, and thank all of you for getting up early, early on the, on the East Coast uh, <laughs> and watching. Now here are highlights from the journey to orbit off the Earth for the Earth. We can see the astronauts are now working with SpaceX suit technicians and the closeout team. And that looks, yeah, that's our commander, Shane Kimbrough. There's uh, Megan MacArthur getting helped into her uh, gloves in her spacesuit. And mission specialist Thomas Pesquet will be making his second trip to space. But that's Aki Hoshide uh, having a laugh <laughs> with some of the uh, suit technicians. There's Shane Kimbrough, pilot Megan MacArthur in the front. Megan blowing kisses. <laughs> so Ma and Aki ready for their ride to the space station. And here they come, the Crew 2 astronauts taking their first steps outside before their journey to space. and checkout building on schedule. And we can see the astronauts inside the crew access arm. Commander Shane Kimbrough, here he is climbing inside Crew Dragon Endeavor. We call this process ingress. We see, we now see the suit technicians uh, will help the, the crew members get buckled in. As you can see, the side hatch has just been closed. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Mission and lift off. Guys, speed Endeavor and crew two. Copy, one alpha. Endeavor launches once again. Four astronauts from three countries on crew two making their way to the one and only International Space Station. The vehicle is pitching down range. Nine Merlin engines on the first stage providing 1.7 million pounds of thrust. Hearing good calls on the first stage performance so far. 